This month's lesson goes out to the Math Counts team from our nation's capital, District of Columbia. Now, in this problem, A, B, C, and D are positive integers, such that 1 minus 1 324th is the product of A over B and C over D. We have to find the least possible value of the sum of these numerators, A and C. Now, we'll start off simplifying the left-hand side. Subtract 1 324th from 1, and we're left with 323 324ths. Now we're looking for two fractions whose product is 323 over 324. And we want these numerators to be small because we're looking for the least possible value of the sum of those numerators. But we can't simplify this fraction. So we need to find two small numbers whose product is 323. Now right away I see I could put 1 and 323 in there as those numerators. But 323 is not very small. The sum of those numerators would be 324. Maybe we can do better. Can we find a couple smaller numbers whose product is 323? Yeah, I don't see it right away either. Now, we could break out some prime factorization. Try to divide 3 into 323, then try 5. That obviously won't work. Then try 7, then 11. But I got to tell you, life's too short for that. Maybe there's a faster way. Wait a second. Check out this denominator, 324. I recognize that. 324, that's 18 squared. But this problem's not about the denominator. It's about the numerator, this 323. Oh, this 323, it's 1 less than 324. It's one less than a square. That's really nice. That's really nice because one is also a square. We can write that numerator as a difference of squares, and we can factor it as a difference of squares. 18 squared minus 1 squared is 18 minus 1 times 18 plus 1. 18 minus 1 is 17. 18 plus 1 is 19. 323 is 17 times 19. And 17 and 19 are prime, so we know that there are no other ways to come up with two numerators there than multiply to 323. Our only options are 1 and 323 or 17 and 19. And we want the sum of those two numbers to be as small as possible. So we're going to choose the 17 and the 19. Their sum is 36, and we're ready for the next problem. Now, in this problem, we have a couple circles given by the equations x squared plus y squared is 169, and x squared plus the square of y minus 14 is 225. Now, these two circles, they intersect. They have a common chord. We have to find the length of that chord. Now, we could just start drawing coordinate axes, draw the circles, but if we do that, then Harvey will roll in here, start bossing me around, tell me what to do. We can't have that. I think we can solve this problem without Harvey. Now, when I look at these two equations, well, we know these two equations, they describe circles that, that intersect. They intersect at points x, y that satisfy both equations. We can treat these as a system of equations. It's just like when we have a system of linear equations. We have two linear equations. They describe lines, and we figure out where those lines intersect. Sometimes we use substitution. Sometimes we use elimination. Let's see if some of those tactics could work right here. I'm going to try elimination. I'm going to start with this equation. I'm going to subtract this equation. We're going to eliminate the x squared. That's going to work. I'm going to start on the left-hand side. I'm going to start with this right here, and I'm going to subtract this right here. The x squareds, they're going to cancel, and I'll be left with that square of y minus 14 minus that y squared right there. The x squareds canceled out. Now, over on the right-hand side, 225 minus 169, that gives us 56. 
look at that on the left hand side. We have another difference of squares. So we're going to factor that as a difference of squares. We'll have y minus 14 minus y times y minus 14 plus y still equals 56. Now these two y's cancel out. We're left with a minus 14. And then in here we have 2y minus 14. Oh, this still equals 56. Now we could divide both sides by negative 14, but I see there's a factor of 2 in here. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 28. That'll take care of the negative 14 out here and the factor of 2 in there. Leave us with y minus 7 on the left. On the right, 56 divided by negative 28 gives us negative 2. Add 7 to both sides. Now we have y equals 5. And we can figure out x by taking that 5, put it back into this equation for y. We have x squared plus 25 equals 169. Then we subtract 25 from both sides. We have x squared is 144. So x has to be 12 or negative 12. And we found the two points where these circles intersect. Those points are 12, 5 and negative 12, 5. Same y coordinate. We don't need the distance formula for this. We can see that these two points, they're 24 apart. So the length of that common chord is 24. And once again, difference of squares made our lives a little bit easier. Now, I think that math counts team in DC there ought to go spread the word, tell some more folks in DC about how difference of squares can make your life a little bit easier because I got to tell you there are a lot of folks in DC that could stand to learn how to make people's lives a little bit easier.